Okay, can I share my screen? You may. Perfect. Okay, I just have to get to the beginning, sorry. Okay, can I start? Okay, just give an indication if you at some stage can't hear me. Um, okay, uh, after the quite uh, solid high level presentation, I have something totally different uh, on the concept of the connected planetarium. Um, well, maybe yeah, I should have called it a connected planetarium with reference uh, reference to the Naval Hill Planetarium where uh, where we are. Uh, but I hope it can be an example of what a connected or uh, the connected in general planetarium can look like. Of course, each context context for all the different planetaria in the world uh, will be different, and they will be un different unique versions of what a connected planetarium can look like. Now, if we just go back to um, uh, the founding of uh, the Naval Hill Planetarium in 2013, uh, that would not have happened if various connections that have been built up uh, through the Boyden Education uh, Program at Boyden Observatory, uh, my colleague also from this project, uh, nowadays we call, talk about the two observatories project, because we have the Boyden Observatory and we have the Naval Hill uh, Planetarium, the Old La Montarsi Observatory, that we mean uh, as far as the public and educational components of the observatories are concerned, we manage them under the name of the two observatories uh, project. I now focus on the Naval Hill Planetarium in this talk. So you can see various uh, organizations and donors that were involved, all three levels of government. And you can imagine that it was quite essential uh, for the funding and because we are using uh, the uh, Old Lamontasi Observatory, we converted that into a digital planetarium. And this Old Observatory was donated to the Man uh, Blue Mountain Municipality, now the Mandalorian Metropolitan Municipality by the University of Michigan. But we negotiated a 35 year uh, concession to establish and manage a digital planetarium. Yeah, the, the, uh, we is now the University of Free State through the Department of Physics. Okay, so both the government uh, uh, levels, different levels of government were important, but very essential or various other donors or institutions that make in-kind contributions. For example, the American Museum of Natural History make available uh, to the digital planetariums in South Africa. Now at this stage, uh, it includes the Ezekiel Planetarium Planetarium and two of the people involved there uh, I see is, are in the audience, that's Daniel and uh, Sally, at least them, uh, and that is a very big contribution because the full dome films um, are very expensive, especially of that quality, uh, and the American Museum of Natural History entered the picture because they are part of the SALT collaboration. So that's just an example of uh, that we, our project would not have happened if a lot of connections were not in place. Now we, uh, as one should do, acknowledge them on our full term. And recently we have uh, added First Technology and the Robex Group, among other well-known uh, well names. Um, you are aware. Uh, most of you will be aware of three uh, prominent planetariums now, uh, the long time established ones in Cape Town and at Wits. Uh, they came long before us, but we entered the picture with uh, the first digital planetarium in South Africa. But now, of course, we have the bigger, younger brother in Cape Town, the Iziku planetarium. And uh, I should still update this slide, I see. 
uh, the Sutherland Planetarium, somewhere around there, I believe. And uh, that's quite a unique project. Um, they have managed to establish a very uh, um, productive small planetarium with appropriate technology, much less expensive than, for example, the Ziku and Babel Hill planetariums. And the Witz planetarium is now in, in an upgrade phase. Uh, so they will have some version of a digital system in the near future. And uh, something big is going to happen in Kuberta or uh, PE, and maybe later in, uh, in Durban. So we are great, uh, glad that the uh, family of digital planetariums are growing in South Africa because that uh, established a network for cooperation, um, uh, various forms of uh, cooperation, for example, already at this stage, uh, Ezekiel Planetarium uh, have, have produced two full dome productions um, that they can share with, uh, and they have already shared uh, with us and other planetaria in the world. Okay, to be a connected planetarium in um, not only uh, the sense of being connected to other in institutions and donors and so on, but being technically connected um, by, in the sense of being able to exchange um, planetary material, food and content, and even dome costing, you need appropriate technology. Okay, we were not fully up to that job of being able to be fully connected technically and uh, and that would also include online support uh, complicated technical systems can go wrong and it's uh, very expensive to get a specialist here from america or uh, now we have a company uh, sister company from the original company's company in america skyscan uh, we work now through SkyScan Europe and uh, with the newest technology and firewall, we can get online support so that they can log into our system and see what's going on our dome. Now, of course, for that, uh, you need quite a broadband uh, at fast internet. You can see my colleague, colleague our technical director for the planetarium going up here with the mast for um, upgrading uh, our internet to a much faster speed to make provision for all these options I have uh, mentioned. So we will get a two gigabyte per second line uh, in, yeah, we got it in May 2022. This also serves as a relay station to the other observatory out of town. This is in the center of the city in Unnaval Hill. And Boyden Observatory is outside the city, about 20 kilometers to the east, not in line of sight of the university. So uh, this mass has a double purpose. It's also a relay station for the internet from main campus to the Boyden Observatory. Okay, we had to upgrade. And you can see the few million rand of high-end computers, laser projectors arriving. That was in May. Yeah, my uh, colleague Pat uh, van Heerden, there's a visitor from Skyscan in Europe. Uh, we're very thankful that we got uh, uh, excellent laser projectors. These are quite big projectors. Uh, there's the installation. Various, yeah, of course, you need an internal network to connect all the computers and devices. Uh, we had these two people, Dieter Schwab and Alex Reiser, uh, on site for about two weeks. And uh, they worked with our technical people. Our team grew substantially, well, our support team in this upgrade. Uh, process compared to where we were in 2013, it's now nine years later. ICT services at the university got intimately involved as far as uh, being part of the process, doing a lot of the technical work. 
and uh, that will be very valuable in future. Here's one of the staff members on the right hand side with uh, Dieter, he's a network guy at the university, Hardy van der Merwe. Let's see Hardy over there. Okay, and after very hard work, all everything worked in harmony. Uh, there was a core technical team. Here's the presenter station in the back of the planetarium. That is the wide screen that we have there. That is the dome. That was when the, the, they did some fine tuning on the collimation and adjustment of the projectors. Uh, that is the content that is being shown on the full dome. The left hand side there, uh, it's very convenient to have such a very, very big wide screen for all the different windows uh, that we have. Okay, now another uh, concept of connection uh, is to connect with telescopes and preferably robotic telescopes. We have not connected with robotic telescopes. Okay, the idea is that we can show. Uh, live images from a telescope on the dome. Uh, we have done it with uh, amateur telescopes, uh, looking, for example, at the big conjunction event uh, in December, now almost two years ago. And of course, International Observe the Moon Nights. So you can have a te telescope anywhere in the world and uh, you have a live feed from the telescope through, a, say, a Zoom session like we have now. And uh, the feed from the telescope then appears there where my uh, uh, the video of myself is there. You can just do a connection of a uh, software adjustments that uh, sent the image through the USB port from the camera on a telescope to um, the Zoom window for your uh, computer. And uh, that just given another um, tool to make the program in a planetarium uh, um, more realistic. You have the virtual sky that you present there, but you can go then in real time to the image on the telescope, and we have done it on a few occasions. And you can then also have an interview with the astronomer at the telescope. You can have a knowledgeable person that can you take you for a tour of, say, the moon and so on. Um, but as far as the robotic telescope is concerned, on special occasions, when there's special events, you can, for example, imagine uh, the DART mission, how fantastic it would have been if you could present a program in the planetarium where you have a live feed. Uh, from uh, a robotic telescope or at least a research telescope of some important observations or a very rare event. Okay, so this telescope was built uh, from the end of last year to uh, May this year. A team from SPOOPS astronomers, well, astronomer and engineer from, uh, from Spain. Uh, from the Institute de Astrophysica de Andalusia. And the telescope uh, uh, they installed there is the Botus 6 telescope. So it's a six one of the Botus uh, telescope network. Here's one of my colleagues, Eileen Segeri. And there the telescope is completed. Uh, Good co collaboration between the University of the Free State, University College Dublin, and then this Astrophysics Institute in, in Spain. So on occasion, we will be able to get also a live feed from a telescope like this uh, to our planet here. And there you can see this uh, uh, beautiful uh, designed telescope. There once again is uh, my colleague, Pat Fanier. There's a team that spent a lot, uh, uh, did most of the work to uh, establish, establish this robotic telescope on the, at Boyden Observatory. There's Pete Mankis, uh, the leader of our astrophysics uh, team. That's Antonio and Emilio. Antonio, you'll see in the next picture. Antonio took this beautiful photo. You will recognize the band of the Milky Way and. Uh, galactic bolts over there. 
still relatively dark there. You can see the sky glow there from the city, but uh, we have good quality, what we can say, suburban sky there. And there's already, uh, from the same collaboration, another robotic telescope that has been working for quite a number of years, the Watcher uh, Teles Robotic Telescope. Uh, it's also at Boyden, there you can see it. And uh, there's Antonio in the control room. And uh, we hope these telescopes and maybe others will enrich the programs in our uh, planetarium. Okay, as far as educational uh, events is concerned, uh, there are various uh, examples of things that one can do. Uh, the yearly uh, reenaction or um, repetition of the famous historical Eratosthenes experiment that uh, Eratosthenes did originally uh, about 2,400 years ago. Uh, we did it with the EA school in Athens. So you have the Greek connection there. So at the, uh, at the same time, with the audiences connected uh, through a live stream of images and a, a Zoom session, we do measurements to measure the length of a one meter stick at local noon. So there's a small time difference between local noon, between their side and our side, about, I think, 10 minutes. But then uh, doing measurements there, you have, uh, of course, due to the different latitudes, you have different lengths of the shadows, and you can work out the distance between the two sides, or given the circumference of the Earth, or alternatively, you can consider the distance to be known, and to work out the circumference of the earth. So there's a group of students, learners from uh, nine different schools uh, in the planetarium working on, on calculations using the data obtained uh, almost simultaneously with the audiences being connected uh, between Athens and Bloemfontein. Okay, there you can see the learners outside uh, Bloemfontein. So you can imagine what are the possibilities to do measurements where parallax may be important if you do the observations from totally different sites on Earth. And I think it's very exciting for students, uh, young students and learners to be involved in activity like that, to get that feeling for the international nature of astronomy. Okay, here's an uh, example of uh, international observe the moon night live streaming. Uh, it was done last year. Quite a number of people reached. I should mention that the uh, uh, great occultation of Jupiter and Saturn, uh, we also observed that uh, simultaneously with that group in Athens, and they live streamed it and eventually reached an audience audience through the YouTube uh, channel of 40,000 people. So it's a method to stretch your activities, the impact of your activities quite a lot. A lot. How come the educational side? Uh, of course, to be yeah, have various links with uh, the public, especially uh, uh, the appropriate um, marketing channels that you can get a wide uh, an audience of many people with a large variety uh, and uh, to be able to do these, uh, these activities frequently, of course, it helps a lot to have good relations with the amateur society with ASA, uh, who various places, different places in the country provide wonderful support to all astronomical outreach activities. You can see Lucas Ferrari here uh, with a telescope from the Garden Root Center that they temporarily made available for use at our planetarium for public uh, activities. Okay, one of those public activities outside the planetarium. So we make also make sure that we connect the people with the real sky, not only the virtual sky. And then we have strong connections with our history. Uh, you can see the old Ramont 
RC refractor telescope that was thrown away in the 1970s. Uh, we uh, refurbished the old components and established this exhibit just outside the planetarium. Of course, it no longer has its lens. The lens is in, uh, in the University of Michigan on display, uh, but it's very much informative to the learners. These learners come from a small rural town in the Southern Free State. Um, here on the right-hand side, you see Moftelian Shoch. Just to mention, she, she presented regularly in our planetarium, and yesterday she had an 83rd, 8 free uh, birthday. So we are very blessed to have someone like that that can still present on the modern digital system. Okay, and then through all our connections uh, from the department uh, that was built up over many years, we have access to um, experts all over the world. Sometimes they visit and then we can use them for uh, presentations in the planetarium. Um, some of you may, may know Jim Adams, uh, he was the NASA Deputy Chief Technologist at NASA. He visits South Africa uh, relatively frequently. He also put, participate once a month in the Sterren Planeta uh, program. Okay, so this was a nice event we had earlier uh, this year. This is one of our uh, donors from the Robex company, well, not in his personal uh, capacity and his daughter and uh, Jim. And uh, this guy, Ernest Sivasi, uh, uh, I saw, I forgot to put in his name, Ernest Sivasi, he's from the United States Consulate <coughs> in Joburg. And that's also a very good connection because uh, of the historical connections of our two observatories with American institutions, but also they are involved in education. And just today, um, there's a science lab that they support from school here in Bluefontein. And at this very moment, they are busy with a program there inside the planetarium. Okay, government agencies, they one can, of course, think about SASTA. Here you can see two staff members of SASTA, Brinda in the right back, and here is Sadrak Mackenzie. They visited us. Uh, we had been accredited, the Boyle Observatory Science Center with SASTA, but um, we could not continue that when the planetarium started. We just had too many things, but now together with the School of Education, we are looking at um, um, accrediting a bigger science center concept one component on campus, and then two satellites, one at Boyden and one here at the planetarium. To accredit, accredit that with SASTA's uh, network of science centers, and that will open uh, doors for annual funding. Okay, and then con the good connection, of course, with our own astrophysics team. Um, they postgraduate students at MEC level, um, most of them get an opportunity to present during an open evening at the planetarium, which is, uh, gives very good quality presentations at a semi-popular level. Okay, and then there are various other uh, organizations with whom we work together frequently, like FEDSAS, uh, MENSA, Friends of Franklin, you can see the planetarium there. It just adds so much to the context that we have the game around the planetarium, the giraffes there. There's the planetarium. Sorry for that. Artists, there's Yanni de Tui at the concert there. Uh, community organizations, people supporting people with disabilities. Okay, an aerial view of the planetarium in the game reserve. You can see a very good, nice uh, music event that we had there, a connection with the sky and music. Uh, we have connections with people doing translations. We translated one of the ESO firms to Afrikaans. We uh, translated a, uh, 
a short firm for young learners to use the suitor. And of course, you have to know people who know the right people that can do that on a professional level. Okay, here we have an event um, for, uh, let me think, it's a project of the South Campus of the, of the university. Um, so we, uh, various other educational projects start to use as, 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 at, as a platform for activities. And if we can build up connections with these people, it just make it so much easier to get a, uh, many people at many different schools here. Okay, that is my short presentation for today. I hope it was short enough. Thank you, Marty. Um, incredible work we've done over there, uh, and too, it's beautiful. Um, and if anyone does have the opportunity to get a diploma and take the plant here, it must be. Um, does anyone just have questions? Um, 